Hi guys, my name is Avinash Kumar and in this video we will build end-to-end -end application using text generation and text embeddings. For this application, we are using open data set of COVID-19 FAQs from Hugging Face. So let's say if I rather than asking about the COVID-19, I'm just asking about the AIDS. It should simply respond, I don't know. Behind the scenes, we are not using any string comparison operation or the keyword searching. This is pure generative AI's magic. We will try to answer some of the common questions when it comes to generative AI and artificial intelligence. One common question when I started using ChatGPT I had was be like, hey, ChatGPT is good for general conversation, general prompts. But when it comes to building something based on my own data, how to do that? One way is to export your own data and provide it as a CSV to the ChatGPT and get some responses out of it or get sense out of it. However, the data which I have is generated at a real-time basis. Building in CSV and getting the response, yeah, it's, it's fine. It will give you some knowledge, but I want something which is more real-time as well. How to build something like that? Let's talk about that in this video. At the high level, the requirements are building an FAQ-based application. That's the data set we will be using. And response users just like you know the normal human responses no hallucination and simply if the provided data lacks an answer simply respond to i don't know now if we see this application there are the two main operations one is adding a new faq and searching an faq so when it comes to adding a new frequently asked question answer from the hugging, hugging face, we took the data, we provide it to the server. Server will compute the text embeddings. Uh, it will use the text embedding model. Text embedding is nothing but it's a representation of the textual data more in the, more as a number space. And for this, um, we are using uh, Cloudflare. If you don't know about the Cloudflare, I will provide the link in the description. Cloudflare provides worker AI and we can use those models to compute the text embeddings. Before we move forward with the design, it is important to understand the concept of the text embedding. Text embedding is nothing but the representation of textual information more into the numbers. It captures the semantics and the contextual meaning of the provided sentence. In order to understand this, most of us have used the Google. We know when whenever we type something on the Google, it tries to complete the sentence. So let's assume we have these three words, apple, orange, and phone, and we computed the number representation of these words. And let's say if I'm typing, I am hungry, I wanted to eat. Now here, if we see, it will suggest two responses. One is either apple or the orange, because that's the one we can eat. If you see the vector embeddings for apple and orange, they are pretty similar. So that's the reason it suggests options to complete the sentence. The next example is Bob is calling me, I need my phone. Obviously, apple and orange doesn't make sense. So I, phone would be returned. Another example is the concept of the information retrieval. In the context of the information retrieval, let's say the application which we have built, how text embeddings can be used to build an FAQ based application. So let's say we have the COVID-19 FAQs, we compute the vectors out of these questions. Now, if you see these, both the questions are completely different. That's why the vectors are also different. Let's say after some time, someone asks this question, who is vulnerable to COVID-19? So when we, when the system will compute these vectors for this text, it would be similar as the first one. So the response of the first question would be returned for this question as well. Now, since we understood how text embedding works, we don't need to go into the in-depth, like how to compute these vectors. This is why we are using built-in models through Cloudflare. Once the text embeddings for that text is computed, we will store in our database. Now, as far as the technology stack is concerned, we are using Spring Boot as our application server. I know um, there are lots of videos available related to the Python and all. But in this video, I wanted to go with the Spring Boot because some of the folks are working on the legacy applications and they wanted to build in their existing applications or the microservices. 
and for just for simple use cases they don't want to completely change the tech stack so how to utilize the spring boot and work with generative ai and if you guys not aware about this open fan uh, it is a restful client which is used to send request from your microservice to some external server so it's just like a rest template if you are familiar with it just takes the request and send uh, it to the appropriate destination server and for the database we are using mongodb vector search there are lots of other options available as well um, for this particular application we are using mongodb and we will see how we will create the vector search indexes as well so that's the high level architecture design for the adding a new question answer now when it comes to searching a uh, search part will be it's a it's a public facing application user will type a question server will get that question and server will try to compute the text embeddings of that question response is return it will try to search into the mongodb database so if you come up into the Mong atlas mongodb they provide free cluster so you don't have to pay anything you can create a free clus cluster out of it once your cluster is created, you can go to the test cluster, select your uh, collection on which you wanted to create the index. You need to go into this search index. Now, one thing to make sure that you are using the, your, your cluster version should be latest because they don't provide uh, this functionality to the older clusters. So you will come up here into the search index since I have already created one, but I'll show you uh, how to create uh, the index. So here you need to come up Atlas vector search next. And here you need to provide the two information. Now this path represents the field which stores the vector uh, embeddings information. And this is the similarity function. Now for this, I mean, they provide three options. One is the Euclidean similarity, cosine and the dot product. For this particular uh, tutorial, I noticed that dot products works better, but feel free to use and experiment with the other two. Coming back to the design, once the similar question answers are received from the database, we are providing the LLM model and the question answers received from the database to Cloudflare Worker AI using HTTP request and it returns the human readable response. And then finally, once the response is ready, we are showing it to the user. As far as the code is concerned, let's start with data model. So in this data model, we have three important attributes. One is question, answer, and the vector embeddings. These two fields are coming from the hugging face open data set. And this is where we are storing the vector embeddings generated through Cloudflare Worker AI. Next, I want to share about the application properties file. This is where we will configure what data model we want to use. What is the Cloudflare access token? What is the Cloudflare account ID, etc. Just to show you the values for these environment variables, I can share my application local properties file. Here, if you will see, I have configured the database related credentials and uh, credentials related to the Cloudflare worker AI and the gateway AI. The more important thing is the text embedding model and the text generation model. So for the text embedding, I'm using this model and for the text generation, I'm using the Mistrial because it provides better results compared to the Llama. Next, we will discuss about the two API endpoints which we have exposed. One to add a question and the other one to get answer for the provided question. So let's go one by one. So in order to add a question, as we discussed in the diagram, we are doing some validation here and then we are computing the embeddings using this function. In this function, we are doing nothing but just calling the Cloudflare API and providing the re relevant parameters. It will compute the embeddings for us. Yeah, now you might have this question like why this is a 2D array. This is because Cloudflare APIs are designed in the way or rather than querying Cloudflare APIs for each and every question, you can simply compute your vector embeddings in one RTT. That's why if you see in the response, it's more like a 2D array. Once embeddings are computed, we are simply storing this in our, into our database. Next, we will discuss about this another important API endpoint, which is slash answer. The purpose of this endpoint is when the user will send the question, it will respond with the answer. So as we discussed in the diagram, we are doing the same thing 
we are computing the vector embeddings using the Cloudflare Worker AI by providing the model name and the question as well. In this text parameter, the question is coming in. Once the vector embeddings are computed using the MongoDB driver, we are searching these embeddings into the MongoDB database. And here, if you see the search function, I'm setting few parameters you can set based on your requirements. I'm just setting limit as two because I don't want to provide so, many, so much uh, data to my text generation model. And after that here, this is really important because as we discussed at the start of the video that we don't want our system to respond anything unnecessarily. Like, you know, COVID is type of a topic our general model already have some information, but we don't want that information. All we want is whatever the information we have provided to the model, it should respond based on that. So that's why we have, I mean, added this prompt. And in this prompt, I have added few strict restrictions. If the provided information doesn't have the answer, simply say that I, I don't know, or, you know, don't provide unnecessary information or provided an information should be relevant uh, to the question and the provided data. So, so after that, once the response is computed, we are simply returning that response. And finally, the application is ready as well. So if you like this video, please like, share and subscribe. Thank you.